You know, one of the great things about having a relationship with Jesus. Once we say yes to him and we allow him into our heart. There's more to life than just what we can feel. There's more to life than just what we can touch, taste, sensations, emotions, all the things that we deal with on a regular basis. There's something else. And sometimes it's difficult for us to wrap our minds around it. Because this is what we know. This is what we can feel. That is what I can taste. That is what I can smell. This is all that I know. One of the things that is so great about God and about the Word of God and the, 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 the apostles and all the different things that come forth in this passage is they share a little insight into what Jesus went through. When our God... In human form came to earth. Now this passage we're going to look at today is way deeper than I am. Because it's been looked at by scholars and discussed for eons, for centuries. Over to the implications of what this passage speaks. I'm not a scholar. Took a few classes here and there. But I read the word of God and I try to apply it practically to my life and try to share that with you each Sunday. The passage we're going to look at today is in Philippians. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Those of you who are here today, thank you for joining me here at the Inspired Church. Our Inspired Church family online, I love you. Thank you for joining us. Whenever you may watch this, wherever you are in the world, leave a comment, leave a prayer request. I'll reply to you personally. We have our message, I mean, our passage here on the board. Those of you at home, I'll read it to you. Or you can break out your iPad or your Bible, whatever it is. We're looking in Philippians, the second chapter, verses 5 through 11. See, we're going to look at a passage where Jesus is living life, both here on earth, but also as our God. He's living life in two dimensions. Because Jesus was more than just a man. He was our God. That's right. Yet he came down on earth and he felt what we feel. He ate what we eat. He felt the temptations that we feel. So I'm going to read this passage to you and I'm going to share with you a little bit what, what God let on my mind because, you know, we have this reality, but we also have our spiritual reality to deal with. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living life in two dimensions. Amen. I pray. Because if we're only focused on what we can feel and what we can taste and what we can smell, then we're missing out on a lot of good, on a lot of blessing, on a lot of peace. All right, I, I, there's so much in my mind. I got to just get into it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Philippians two, chapter five. I mean, chapter two, verses five through eleven. That says, "Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be, did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation." Taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death on the cross. Therefore, God, therefore, God also has mightily exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at this that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. And those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to God, the glory of the Father. Amen and amen. Amen. 
This passage is deeper than me. It deals on a whole different level than us human beings know and can comprehend sometimes. Because like I said a minute ago, this is all we know. We ain't been to heaven yet. But we do have, when we say yes to Jesus, there's a little something that changes. We get the Holy Spirit within us. We have something going on in our lives, something that we can grasp a hold of. The pastor said, therefore, if there, it says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. I say, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to think like Jesus did? I'm supposed to have that kind of mindset? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. The reality is, yes. <laughs> We're supposed to, you know, what was, that, Pat, what was that thing? What would Jesus do? They used to have the little bracelets and the shirts and all that. That's supposed to be our mindset. Right. As a situation arises in our life, we're supposed to stop for a minute and say, what would my God do? Mm. You see, we are supposed to, once we say yes to Christ, have a spiritual mm. mindset. Amen. Mm. Now, that doesn't just kick in all of a sudden, at least not for me. <laughs> I, I, I found this journey of trying to be Wise and smart, a little more difficult than I may have thought it would be. I figured that, you know, once I rededicate my life to God and get my life back in order, it'd be smooth sailing. But what I found out is it's a journey that's up and down. And some days I have faith and some days I don't. Thank you. Amen. Just being straight. Ever felt that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let this mindset be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. You see, we're supposed to have the same values as Jesus did. Oh, that's good. Oh, boy. I mean, if we're looking at his life, right. and he is our Lord and Savior, and we've accepted him, and we read the word of God, and we've heard a million preach, and a million sermons being preached, and we've read books, and we've done this and that, and we've heard over and over again that we're supposed to have the mindset of Christ. But you know, we're supposed to have the values. That's one of the things this world has cast aside is our values. What do we believe in? What do we stand for? What is against this? What, what disturbs my soul? But yet I still dabble in it. But yet I still have my foot in that door. What keeps me awake at night? It's okay, honey. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. yes. There's stuff that stirs your soul. You see, we're supposed to be living a life that is in two worlds. Right. We're supposed to enjoy this time we have on earth mm -hmm. and battle our way through it and love those around us and battle our way through jobs we can't stand and sicknesses and all these things but we're also supposed to be on our knees every day surrendering to our God in humility and humbleness but then God doesn't want a bunch of weak Christians who can't stand up for their values and who can't share the word of God with someone that comes into their path how many people has the opportunity been there for us to share with? And we did not. Amen. Amen. How many times? See, we're supposed to live our life in two worlds. We're supposed to live a life here on earth and a life of the Spirit. And as we look a little further into this passage, we can open our eyes to how Jesus came to be and what this was. And it says, let, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal to God. Mm. Now, this is where it gets a little deep. Mm -hmm. Like I said, being deeper than me. Now, Jesus was being... Being was in the form of God. That's right. 
in my mindset, that means Jesus is God. In the flesh, for real, being there. Jesus was God in all levels and in every way. I've heard time and time again how people tear Christ down because of passages such as this. Where this is going. Because they do not believe that our God would tumble himself and, and take on the form of a human. But you see, what we have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is we're not God. And as much as we may try to be smarter than the word of God. And as much as we may sit and ponder and scholars go over the book over and over and pick it to pieces from the Greek to this, to that, and to this and that. They are not God. That's right. The word of God says Jesus is God right there. So I'm going to throw up my hand and say hallelujah to that. So Jesus is, is God in all levels and always. And it says right here in this passage that did not consider robbery to be equal with God. Jesus is co-equally God. And he is a separate personality. They're our God. We have the Father, we have the Son, we have the Holy Spirit. All God. Different personalities. Different aspects. Covering different things. Taking care of things. Handling stuff. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Jesus Christ, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man. So our God saw a need, us. Saw Adam and Eve. Mess it all up. Had to eat the fruit. So does it sound like us? We got everything we may need in life. We say yes to Christ. We have salvation. We got eternal life. And we can't <coughs> keep our fingers off the fruit. You see, we're walking in one world a little more than the other. Our foot is deeper into the slime that is the earth. You see, we're supposed to be walking in two dimensions. We're supposed to be seeing the angels and hanging out and praising God even in the time of troubles. But what we do is we fall on our knees and we fall on our face and we blame God for the situations that we're in. You see, a lot of times in life, we're way deeper into this earth than we should be. Sometimes, man, we got to look up. Stop looking at ourselves. And our own power and our own strength to accomplish the things that we want. Not the things we need, but the things we want. That's important. There's a big difference there. Because a lot of times we pray for things we want, not things we need. And it's okay to have an abundance. And I thank God that we all have an abundance in our lives. But you see, our God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Our God humbled himself because of our sin. Now this is much debated about what did Jesus give up to come into this form? Did he give up powers? Did he give up his seed? Blah, blah, blah. 
And I understand the idea, and I understand the deepness, and I understand the theology. People have this viewpoint, people have that viewpoint. My viewpoint is my God saw a problem with me. Thank you. And right. our hearts. That's right. And our sin. And said, if this is what I got to do, so be it. I will come in human form. Still God. Right. Could pull myself out at any minute. But I know the need and I'm willing to give it all up. But he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Philippians 2 verse 8 says, And being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even in death of the cross. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? Jesus cried. Our God laughed. Our God felt pain. Our God felt love. Our God felt <coughs> temptation. He felt betrayed. He was spat on. He was beaten. Most importantly, he still loved us and he cared for us. And he knew one day I would be speaking these words and you would be hearing these words. And he knew that the word of God would touch a heart or two. And it was no problem. And he humbled himself to the point of death on the cross. For you, for me, so that we may live, so that we can be free. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we need to live our life in two dimensions. Jesus did. He was God and man. With all the power that God has, and yet he humbled himself to the point of death so that we can have a spirit so that we can live eternally so that we can be forgiven the passage continues on into verse 9 it says therefore God also highly exalted him giving him the name which is above every name God knew the sacrifice. God knew what it was going to take for Jesus to go through this process. And God said, man, you are highly exalted. There's nothing like this that has ever occurred. The creation of the earth was nothing compared to the sacrifice of Jesus dying on the cross. That's right. And he gave him a name mm -hmm. that shall be above all others. He gave him a name so special, so sovereign, and the name was Lord. To be worshipped, to be exalted, to be lifted up, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was positioned that moment, that day. When you cry out to your Father, when you cry out to your Lord, when you say the name of Jesus, things can change. I'll never forget, we're in Turkey. Driving down the road, all of our family in a car, get hit in the back by a truck. We start going off the road. The car starts tipping up. I'm 
holding on to the side. I knew we were in trouble. And I heard my mother say, Jesus. That was the only word spoken, at least that I could hear. I flew out the window. I woke up with my legs, my feet hanging in the window of the car. We rolled end over end and then sideways twice down a hill. No one was injured. The only blood was a little cut on my dad's side. I heard Jesus. What other words need to be spoken sometimes in our lives? That's right. Sometimes we just need to stop talking. We need to listen. We need to shut our mind off. I know I do. Therefore God also highly exalted him, giving him the name which is above all, above every name. And that name of Jesus that every knee should bow and those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, Amen. the Father. In those two passages, the entire intelligent universe is called to worship Jesus Christ as Lord. Everything that can think, everything that has moves or whatever it is, is called to praise Jesus Christ as Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus lives. This book is relevant. It's real. It's alive as we are. And our God, who saw the sin of man, hi, <laughs> and who saw the need that is our souls, humbled himself. And Jesus came to earth and died that we may live. And it was an act so powerful, so humbling, that God said, Jesus, we're, we're, we're giving you a new thing here. We're, we're replacing you in a new category. And you are our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes we can sit and pick the word of God apart. I've had people come to me and they get so caught up on one passage or one part of the word of God that they can't move any further past it because they don't understand it. And I said, what about the rest of it? What about the red words? Read just the red words for two days. Let go of some things. You're not going to know it all. Sometimes. We just have to let it in. Because we're so caught up in our intellect and our mind running away with us that we lose the joy Amen. of being a follower of Christ. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus lived his life here on earth in two dimensions. He was here and he was there. We need to do the same thing. We need to be here. But man, we need to be there. Because there is where our peace is. There is where our joy is. There is where our true love is. If you're trying to find those things in what we can touch, our priorities are wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, this passage calls for the entire intelligent universe to call and worship Jesus Christ as Lord. We need to do that a little more. 
In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah, Lord, I come before you today. And I thank you that you are a God who, who came to earth just for us. Oh, God, grant us peace. Help us to stop holding on to the things of this earth when we can have so much more if we just trusted you. And someone hearing these words may not know this Jesus I've been speaking about. And maybe you haven't turned your life over to him. And you feel right now a call in your soul and, and you need to do that. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Be my God. I give my life to you. Make my home in heaven. So God, I just pray a special blessing over all who may hear these words. That you uplift us, that you touch us, that you make us dance in the spirit, that you, that you bring a smile to our eyes. And may we live in this earth and also with you. And may we know that we know without a shadow of doubt. But if we die today, we're in heaven with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you for letting me share with you today.